Hey guys, this is Josh Journey, Rich Farmer. Welcome to the farm vlog. This is not really a farm vlog. I am in the most beautiful place in the world, Moab, Utah. I really, really love this place. We're out on a road trip and we've been traveling in the Mercedes Sprinter van for how many days? eight days eight or nine days here and i want to give you a quick review and some food for thought before you buy a mercedes sprinter van we didn't test drive the ugly the ugly ones i say the ugly ones the other ones the ugly ones the nissan it's ugly to me the ford it's ugly to me the dodge version it's ugly to me this was pretty this was nice this looked good this drove good this has a reliable mercedes four-cylinder diesel engine in it we opted not to get the six-cylinder diesel engine we got the four-cylinder diesel we didn't need the six-cylinder diesel to pull with or anything like that we're just traveling in this thing now i'll talk to you a little bit more about that which you might want to think about so i've got some food for thought on this mercedes sprinter van before you buy, ask Tony Rich Farmer and we'll tell you what we really think about the Mercedes Sprinter van. So come on along. Woo! So this isn't one of those reviews where I'm going to walk you around inside the van. You already know what these vans look like. If you're thinking about buying one, here's what it looks like, okay? I think the Dodge Power Master has this big old plastic front end that looks stupid to me. I don't like it. I like the Mercedes. It looks a lot more classy. The Nissan, to me, looks like a shoe. It looks like a dog's nose. I don't want to drive that thing. It's ugly. Let's stop dogging the competition and talk about the Mercedes. This has the i4 four-cylinder diesel engine. has a 5,000-pound towing capacity. A 3.0 liter six-cylinder diesel engine has the same towing capacity as the four-cylinder engine. We haven't run into any power issues except for when we go to climb a big, big mountain. There were some steep mountains in the Rockies here that were a little bit too much for the Sprinter van four-cylinder. We were unable to maintain 80 miles an hour. Now, if you're worried about maintaining 80 miles an hour in a big old van like this, I'm gonna say half of a percent of time we're going to be climbing a hill like that and we'll need to go 80 miles an hour it had no trouble maintaining 65 70 but 80 was too much this thing is governed down at 85 as a max speed so we're out on the highway here the speed limit's 85 we would never speed but the max speed on this is 85 miles an hour it does not go any faster now i don't know if i got a governed version or what but Mine will only go 85 miles an hour. So let's get on to the likes and dislikes. I have a piece of paper. The first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do you just like your boss does. We're gonna tell you some things that we like, some things that we don't like, and then we're gonna end on a positive note of some things that we really, really like about you and how good you are, such a good little van. We've been in the van for eight days now. We bought the van about 15 days ago. Dislikes, there are several dislikes that I have, and I'm gonna take you inside the van and show you these dislikes, and I'm gonna show you on the outside too windshield is cracked okay the air conditioning and heat we're going to go in there we're going to talk about that stuff air conditioner and heat controls this is for the front passenger compartment these selections go all the way around so this is the vent here okay this also blows the defrost in any part of this circle right here it always blows the defrost and we live in a very humid area so what it does is it causes the windows to fog up on those cool mornings when you're still using the air conditioner to knock the humidity down. I don't know what the heck this does. This is our rear air, which is a must to have. This is our rear air controls, okay? When I push this button for recirc, it circulates air, but it really doesn't seem to blow any harder to me. My next complaint, the fuel gauge. It says it's about a little over halfway full. Well, I go about 100 miles before it even moves, and then it moves very slowly until it gets right to the end, about a quarter tank, and then it goes straight to zero. When I get ready to fill this thing up, and it's right on zero, it still has four gallons of fuel left in it. Sorry, I told you I was gonna start with some positives. Positively, awesome amount of room in here, guys. Really comfortable chairs, very, very comfortable chairs. We've been riding in it for 16 hours, and our backs don't hurt or anything like that. Really, really happy with the spaciousness and the room. I'm six foot five and my wife is five foot two, which is a big difference. She says that this bar right here gouges her leg. So there's a bar right here. It kind of hangs over the edge and it gouges her leg. Sorry, that's some of the negatives. These are just things that are food for thought if you're thinking about buying this van. 
It's very quiet, except for one thing, and I'll take you out and show you that. Very, very quiet going down the road, except for over 70 miles an hour. We started having trouble with this rubber. This rubber started flapping in the wind. So we had to run on our $50,000 van, we had to run tape, packing tape, across the top of the window right here to keep it from going while we're driving down the road. Shouldn't have to do that. noise guys I don't know if you can hear that that's the unbearable noise that you hear from the windshield on the Sprinter once we get over about 75 miles an hour and there's a crosswind it doesn't do it all the time it just does it when there's like a crosswind but it's like oh, it's so annoying that's why we got tape ran all the way across the top of the windshield so I really enjoy the ride. It rides very smooth. It doesn't sway or do a whole lot of whack and whack throwing you around and stuff like that. Unless you get up next to a tractor trailer and you can tell you have a high profile vehicle. This is the 144 inch wheelbase. Not the high top, not the long van. Would we have got the high top? Yeah. Had I thought a little bit more about it, we probably would have bought the high top. The air conditioner, rear air is a must. If you don't have it on the big old van like this, the back is going to get hot. So you're going to have to make up for it by cranking up the heat in the inside at the front. Not cool, really loud, and annoying. Okay, back to the list. The stereo in this van is very nice, okay? I really like it. Um, it, it has an SD card slot, which is really cool. So I put about 2,000 songs on my SD card. Now, I can't access those songs for some reason, and this is ridiculous. What am I going to do with that? I don't know. So the Mercedes stereo sounds good, but it's not very user friendly for driving down the road and making adjustments. It's just not very user friendly. So I give it probably a five out of 10. It is nice, but, and the sound is good, but if I go into my SD card, I can't even select more than like two different artists. It's, it's kind of a pain in the butt. It does have Bluetooth and the Bluetooth is very handy. When you're driving down the road and you're talking to somebody on Bluetooth and you're going 70 miles an hour, it's a little bit loud for the person on the other end of the phone. Guys, if you buy this van, here's a crack and here's a crack. That's day one, day two, three, four, and five. Okay, if you buy this van, you had better have full coverage for your glass with a zero deductible because this windshield's probably about 600 bucks. It's a Mercedes windshield, so you know it's gonna be very expensive. Another thing I don't like, here's your turn signal. Here's your cruise control. Frequently, I'll be trying to turn and I'll hit my turn, my what I think is turn signal and it's my cruise. So I'll be driving and it sets my cruise instead of puts my left hand turn signal on. This is funky. This should be on the steering wheel. This shouldn't be right here. This, this is funky. It should be here or on the steering wheel. And again, guys, I'm not bashing Mercedes. I love, love, love this van. I am not even looking back. I totally enjoy it. Traded in my Dodge Ram pickup for it. I really, really, really love it. But I, I am gonna go over a few things that we don't like about it, okay? Another thing we don't like, we're driving west. This windshield is big, okay? If you get one, try to get one with the tinted on the top because if you don't, it gets hot when you're driving west the sun shines right in on top of you okay defroster stays on all the time and these vents kind of blow off into infinity right here which keeps the cab cool but i don't know this we could probably do without and have more vents up here next thing the locks that's unlock that's lock it's kind of a weird setup the locks normally i would think would be over here but they're in the middle in a ridiculous weird spot. So we're not a pack of idiots here, but frequently we'll hit the lock button and we won't know what the heck if it's locking or unlocking or what it's doing. So you can hit one of the buttons twice and it'll unlock or it'll lock. It's kind of strange. So maybe I need to read by owner's manual, but I should be able to just get in the vehicle and hit the lock and unlock button. It'll be fine. Now let's talk about more ridiculous stuff. The cup holders. Look at this cup holder, okay? That'll hold a can. This cup holder will hold a can. It'll, it's too short things fall out of it all the time. If you put a 20 ounce bottle in right there, it just falls over and falls out. Whoever's idea it was to put the cup holders in the dash where the sun would beat down on your soda was not a very bright person, okay? It's great for hot drinks, but for cold drinks, it just the sun just beats down. You put a water bottle there and a half hour later, it's 90 degrees. 
not a good spot for cup holders. There need to be more outlets in here for charging. Uh, you know, this is 2017 right now. This van's a 2016 model. It needs more outlets for charging, more outlets so that we can charge our cameras, more outlets so we can charge our phones, we can use our GPS, all these things. It'd also be very nice if we had a little 110 outlet. Utility, utility, utility. This is a utility vehicle and that's what I'm using it for. And I only have one charger outlet in the front of the van. There needs to be more. So I bought a splitter and we've got several now, but there need to be more. There needs to be more. And there's nowhere to put your cell phone. The little pockets in here are too shallow. This little above head pocket, it's too shallow. I can put a pack of gum up there and hit the gas and it falls right back out. Okay, so final complaint guys, and this is a big one because I don't like gas all over the side of my vehicle. The fuel filler is right here. You have to open the door and open this little door. Now you can still close this door and you can pump fuel. You just push the fuel filler in there. Well, that doesn't fit every fuel filler. Sometimes these diesel places, when you go in, this is their, their nozzle is too big. So you take this off and you get diesel all over your hands because this inherently spills out all down right here. And I'll show you that later on when we fill up with fuel. This is a standard size diesel spout and it goes right in there pushes in and then you start pumping diesel okay now you can't pump diesel wide open or it'll click so you have to set it on a small setting here the reason I'm telling you about this is because this is one of my legitimate complaints and you're getting ready to see what the biggest complaint is when I take the nozzle out it's nearly impossible to not spill fuel down the side of the vehicle so I keep tub of towels right here in my door for that reason and it sucks that I have to get diesel fuel on my hands every time I fuel this vehicle up. This is the biggest gripe that I have about the Sprinter van. Well, while we're fueling up, I'll tell you about the van. We basically set the van up for a mobile YouTube channel so people can scan the QR code while they're going down the road. Kind of cool. All right, here goes. Our fuel thing just clicked off. First, let me tell you how absolutely careful I am getting this out. So I pull it out. This kind of sticks and it always drips diesel fuel no matter what that was a minor drip compared to what it usually does I don't want that I don't want it on my hands I don't want it on my vehicle also I was griping about the fuel gauge well here we are 18.6 gallons it says it's completely empty in here and it holds 24 gallons so I had six more gallons of fuel in my tank and it's telling me it's empty so you find yourself pulling over to get gas a lot more frequently than you really need to. Guys, another thing you may want to consider, if you do a lot of off-road type driving, you may want to consider getting the four-wheel drive version. The two-wheel drive version is more of a city truck, I guess, or a highway type truck. Uh, the four-wheel drive version is a lot more stout. We're doing a little off-road riding right now, I'll show you. This guy's unloading his razor. So, as you can tell, we're bumping around pretty hard and we're not on a very bumpy road. The rear end, it, it's not a, I guess you call it a limited slip where if one tire spins, the other tire grabs a hold. So if one tire spins, it just continues to spin and the other tire doesn't grab. We got in a little bit of a pinch where we were going over a ditch and it just sat there and spun. So this big long vehicle just kind of got in a bind and, and decided it was going to be stuck so it just got stuck so that's another one of the things that I really don't like about the van is that uh, I guess you call it a limited slip rear end so if one wheel slips the other wheel grabs and takes you on you can get stuck on a wet banana in this thing I think if we had to buy one again we would try to order one with a limited slip rear end or just the four-wheel drive model so all in all it's been a great road trip vehicle it's quiet I'm getting 24 and a half average miles per gallon out of this gigantic vehicle right here 24 and a half miles per gallon is super duper awesome especially when i pull up next to an excursion like a ford excursion it makes it look like a little baby truck this thing is big it's great fuel economy very very comfortable but there are a few nuances i wanted to talk about with you before you go out and buy one looks like we got a jeep coming right here we're on a jeep trail in moab utah awesome guys this is josh stony ridge farmer thanks for watching i appreciate you come on back and see us watch our farm journey we're going to take a 200 acre old tobacco farm and make it into something beautiful. That's what this is all about. But if I've got a new vehicle, I thought I might do a quick review on it. All right, come on back and see us. Give me that thumbs up. Woo! Well, come on down to the Stony Ridge.
Bring it.